Hi guys. Okay, hopefully fourth time's the charm because I've recorded this like three times already and every single time something's happened and I messed up the video. So like phone calls or I just I started rambling on about something weird and sorry, I'm really tired, but okay, hopefully this take is it. So before I get started with the actual problem, I just wanted to say that I know I was supposed to post at least one or two videos last week and I didn't. And the reason is because I mentioned that I work in the space sector and you might know, but NASA space apps was this weekend and I was so, so busy with that, like working all weekend. And so, yeah, that's why I didn't get to post anything since Friday or since Thursday. And then before that, I had midterms and assignments and labs for my master's and so sorry that was that was just all a headache and I just didn't have time to post anything but now I do so hopefully this week I can post a couple of videos and then two I wanted to ask or make a request and that is if you like my videos or if you appreciate the things that I'm doing you know the tutorials that I'm doing on this channel then please don't forget to like and subscribe my videos if you yeah, if you like my channel, please subscribe. And that's because my goal is to reach 500 subscribers by December. So I would really appreciate if you did that. And then if you find any of my videos helpful, whether it be this one or other ones, please don't forget to like them. Okay, so now let's get started with the actual problem. So 4.1. Two dogs pull horizontally on ropes attached to a post. The angle between the ropes is 60 degrees. If Rover exerts a force of 270 newtons and Fido exerts a force of 300 newtons, find the magnitude of the resultant force and the angle it makes with Rover's rope. And you can tell I record this four times because I, I usually am pretty slow at reading the question, but this time I'm so fast. Okay, anyways, so my brain always just stops working when it comes to reading questions out loud. I don't know why, but okay, all right. So... With this problem, as we do with any problem, we want to draw a diagram. And this one is a little bit tricky because the wording, in my opinion, is kind of confusing. So the angle between the ropes is 60 degrees and the dogs are pulling horizontally, meaning that let's let's look at this from two different views. So we're going to have this like side view and like let's pretend we're like right over here. OK, so that's side view. And then this is going to be bird's eye view. So well, we're just going to be like a tiny dot there, right? That's going to be us. So this is bird's eye view. So from side view, we have this pole and we basically have these two dogs and they're both going to be pulling horizontally, right? Now, what is the angle between these two ropes? It's 60 degrees. So now let's look at that from bird's eye view, because as you can see, this diagram is kind of confusing and I don't like that. So let's say this is the pole. Okay, so this pole, we're going to say that this is one of the ropes, right? So maybe I'm just going to draw like an X. That's going to be the dog pulling. That's going to be Rover pulling at 270 newtons or exerting a force of 270 newtons. And then this is going to be a Fido exerting a force of 300 newtons. So let's say this is Rover and this is Fido. And an X there for the other dog. And then the angle between this is 60 degrees, right? So if we're standing right over here, you can see how it kind of looks like, um, it kind of looks like this from the side view. Okay, so now that we have the problem set up out of the way, let's draw a little, um, a neater diagram on our bottom right corner so we can refer to it throughout the problem. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and do that right over here. So this is our pole. And I'm gonna go ahead and say that this is a positive X direction and this is the positive Y direction. And I highly suggest in these types of problems, you want to set the main, and I say that quote unquote main uh, vector at the x or y axis so in this one you definitely want to set it at the well i mean you don't have to set it at the y but you, you like setting it at the x is really helpful and why is that because one um when we take our components right so when we have like our x y components we don't want uh well we want to minimize the number of components we have to take, right? So if we all if we put it in the x direction, then we only have something right over here, and then we don't have anything here. But you know, as opposed to if this angle was um, kind of like that, right? If it were, if we didn't put at the horizontal, if we just put it like somewhere 
you know, random, then we'd have an X component and we'd have a Y component because X component is right over here and Y component is right over there. So the, the problem would have just more components, right? And let me just illustrate that with a diagram in case that wasn't too clear, which I completely understand if it wasn't. Also, I hate the eraser for this new Zoom update. I'm erasing one place and it just has a mind of its own. All right, so let's draw this in maybe blue so it's a little bit more clear. So this is what I'm talking about. We can draw this diagram like this, right? So this is going to be Rover and this is gonna be Fido. Or we can draw the diagram like this. Where this is Rover and this is Fido and this is 60 degrees and this is 60 degrees. So when we set it, so we said that this is X and we said this is Y. So because Rover is literally at the horizontal positive X axis, we only, when we write down our components, we have, you know, this, uh, we have something right over here. So we have the value here. And then we don't have a Y value because, you know, there's no Y component for this, for this vector. But then here we have an X component and we have a Y component. So it's just easier because, you know, why work with two components when we can work with one component? That's just the whole point of why we want to set it up like this. And then two, the second reason is because we're looking for the result, the magnitude of the resultant force uh, in the angle it makes with Rover's rope. So if Rover's rope's like this, and we wanna know the magnitude of the resultant magnitude might be something like this, right? Then we need to find the angle between this. So we need to do some sort of like subtraction and we need to figure out what, what this angle is and then this angle and you know why go through all of that when we can just say hey rovers pulling um literally like directly at the x component sorry at the at the horizontal axis we're setting rover as the horizontal axis and then all we need to do is find the resultant component right so maybe it's like something like um maybe it's something like that right and all we need to do is find the resultant component, the angle between the resultant component and the horizontal axis, which we also set as Rover's rope. So we just need to do one step instead of two steps. So that's my whole spiel of why we need to set up the question the way that I'm going to, right? And that is with Rover at the, at, at the positive X axis with Rover's vector at the positive x-axis. So let's do that. Okay, so again, drawing this bird's eye view, this is going to be, oh, I hate how I drew that. Okay, this is going to be the, mm, no, positive x and positive y. So this is going to be Rover, right? So it's going to be 270 newtons, and that is Rover. And then Fido is going to be 300 at 60 degrees from Rover and the X axis. So that's going to be 60 degrees and that's gonna be Fido and that's going to be 300 newtons. Okay, so now next step, we wanna find the magnitude of the resultant force and the angle. So let's start off with magnitude of the resultant force. Well, we need to add the X components together, the Y components together, and then we're gonna use Pythagorean theorem to find the resultant magnitude, right? So we're gonna add the vectors. We want to, yeah, add the vectors together. That's what we're doing. Okay, so let's do that in purple. So X and Y, no, Y. And for X, it's going to be two, 70 newtons, so positive 270 newtons, right? Because we said this is positive x and this is positive y. And then for y, we have no y component because it would be like, well, there's no y component. It's literally at the x component. And then the next thing we're going to do, and that's for that's for Rover. And then for Fido, we do have an x component and we have a y component, right? And this is going to be x component. And that's going to be 300 cos 60. And for the Y, this is the Y, also positive, it's going to be 300 sine 60. 
Great, now we need to add these together to get the total X and the total Y. And when I do that, I get 420 newtons. And let me just, let me add that. Let me just double check on my calculator because I am not recording this video another time. If I had to do that, you guys just won't be seeing this problem. Okay, perfect, 420 and then 300 sine 60. And that's gonna be 259.8623 newtons, right? So that's in the X component and that's in the Y component. Now, if we want to draw this out, right? So now let's use pink to draw this out and figure out what the resultant magnitude is. So this is X, this is Y. This is going to be 420 newtons, and this is going to be 259.8623 newtons. And we want the resultant, sorry, resultant one. And that's going to be this one. And let's just call it like, we'll just call it like a vector R, okay? So the magnitude of R is going to be the square root of 420 squared plus 259.623 squared, right? Or actually, this is better notation. So R would just be the magnitude. OK, so when I do that, and again, I'm double checking this on my calculator. And that is 493.8623 newtons. So that's our magnitude of our resultant force. And what's the angle? Now, remember how we said that this x-axis is rover's rope? So that means we just need to find the angle between this vector and the x-axis, and we'll know the magnitude of the resultant force. Sorry, we'll know the angle between the resultant force and rover's rope. So that's just going to be, so if this is theta, theta is equal to tan inverse of opposite 259.8. 623 over adjacent, which is 420, and theta is 31.75 or 74, I think. Let me just double check on my calculator. It's 74 for me. Going to scream, but okay, that's okay. I'm going to be patient today. Okay. So, yeah, the theta I'm getting is 31.74 degrees. All right. So, that is going to be the angle between resultant force and Rover's rope. So, I'm going to write down our final answer. Magnitude is of the resultant force is 493 newtons or 493.862 newtons. And the angle is 31.74 degrees between resultant force and rover's rope. So that's our final answer. Awesome. Okay, so if that was helpful, please don't forget to like and subscribe. And if it wasn't, then thank you for watching anyways. I hope maybe the next video I make will be more helpful or some of my other videos. Okay, and I just wanted to say that thank you so much to everyone who's been leaving comments to me. I really appreciate your encouragement and I, I'm, I'm glad that my videos are helping you. And also thank you to everyone who's pointed out any typos in my videos. And I think there's a couple of videos out there and I will be making like some sort of like correction video. So watch out for that, but thank you so much. 
Um, but sorry, mind you that none of my, like in none of my videos are any of the mistakes, like so like major mistakes, like the final answer is wrong. The final answer is always right. And my solution is always right. Cause I always like to do the problem beforehand too, or most of the time I do it before. But I think in a couple of cases, like I forgot to write like a minus sign uh, while I was solving, uh, while I was setting up the equation, I forgot to write a minus sign somewhere. And the, again, like, because I've already done it on paper, my result, like my final result was correct. But it was just like, while I was writing stuff out, I forgot to, you know, I wrote the wrong number or I wrote, you know, a minus sign somewhere, or I didn't write a minus sign somewhere. So just while I was doing the video, I like, it was essentially a typo, even though I'm not typing anything, but sorry, I'm rambling again. And if I keep going on, I will forget my train of thought and then I'll have to re-record this video. So I'm going to stop there. Anyways, too long, didn't read. There's a, there's a couple of like small, um, like typo type mistakes in my videos. And I'm just going to write down some, I'm either going to make a correction in the, what's it called? Like the description box, or I'm just going to create like a part two and I can just like redirect people from the old video, but the, uh, the overall, um, sorry, solutions are correct for all my videos, but yeah, thank you for everyone who pointed my typos out. All right. So thank you for watching and see you next time.